In the previous video, I did an overview of the evolution of Hanwell electronics towards commoditization and have suggested that more web technologies will be leveraged to align with general trends in computing. Let's see how this is true by trying to add a simple signal decoding to tiny SI Ultra. It will require several adjustments in the initial web spectrum analyzer project that I wrote previously. So in this video, I'll add a little bit more code. But before I will go into more details, if you like my content, please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks. When it comes to general data encoding, if we don't focus on well-defined communication specifications like Wi-Fi or GSM, there is no single standard on how to transmit data across the available electromagnetic spectrum. Let's see how one of the most basic data encoding mechanism works, on-off keying. Working principle in this encoding is simple. Each bit is of a specified length. For 433 MHz communication, it's usually 1 millisecond. Then 0 is represented as a longer high signal, about 600 microseconds. And 1 is represented by a shorter signal of about 200 microseconds. When it comes to a preamble, each manufacturer has its own prefix to indicate the beginning of a message. In this example, an example used across the video, we assume that the message prefix is one zero bit. We know TinySA has an impressive range of frequencies it can listen to, but let's try to push it a little bit further by testing 433 MHz band with my Flipper Zero. For our purpose, we are going to leverage three functionalities of Tiny SA Ultra. Zero span scanning. We are interested in only frequency. Sweep time setting. We want to fetch data over a well defined span of time. We want to set up a trigger that will be released once a signal will be detected that crosses a given threshold. For our testing, we will be using an arbitrary value of minus 70 dBm. Even though the two first features are critical for our tests, the trigger is here to help us prove we are able to successfully decode acquired data. With the information we got, let's see how the web application will be able to leverage the above logic and information to decode the data. Let's arm a trigger to decode a sample data piece from Flipper Zero at 433.92 MHz. For our purposes, we are going to set a sweep time to 100 milliseconds. As we can see, data was acquired and we are able to decode the data. Here, unfortunately, a limitation of the device kicks in. It can return only 450 points. If we want to get better resolution, we must reduce sweep time. Let's now reduce sweep time to 60 milliseconds and observe the results. I implemented the decoding screen in a way that it sets a trigger in Tiny SA Ultra and waits for a single shot of data. I think just a regular raw scanning functionality with, for example, 100 milliseconds sweep time could solve the issue to prove a constant feed of data from the device to the web browser. The sweep time and speed of transmit of the fetched data to the web browser seems to be the main limitation of the setup. I think it would be hard to achieve a 25 millisecond round loop, which would technically allow us to decode data at around 2 GHz. If we want to analyze data at 4 GHz, we'd need to sweep at around 12 milliseconds, which is around the minimal sweep window that can be captured by Tiny SI Ultra.
I may revisit the communication logic with TinySA so that I will be able to better utilize what it offers and also be able to decode messages at higher frequencies. It would be also good to port the library RTL for 3 v Fortunately, with WASM, C library porting is quite doable. It can be another extension worth adding. This was a rather short video, but I wanted to show it's possible to decode data with Tiny SA Ultra. As usual, this video is not sponsored by anyone. The statements made here are my personal opinions, and I prefer to stay like that. One more time, please like and subscribe, and see you in the next video.